Hi everybody, welcome back to the Renaissance Woodworker. I'm your host, Shannon Rogers, and welcome into my shop. Now, more than a year ago, I built my joinery bench back there, and I keep promising a lot of you guys that I'll give you kind of a tour of the features of it. And I thought, what better way to give a tour of those features and functions and why I added them than to build a small project. And that's what we're gonna do today. My original reasons for building this bench were to have a dedicated space for the more detailed operations that I didn't want to necessarily be spending a bunch of time bending over. In other words, joinery. First and foremost was dovetailing and the, uh, shall we say, reintroduction of the Moxon vice idea where you could lift your work up and not have to bend over so much is really what got me thinking about this. I also began to think about doing carving on this bench. I'd started to work with my carving chisels a lot more and certainly I was sitting down at my Rubo bench but having something up higher where I could bring in something like a dedicated task light and shine right down on top of my work while maintaining a more upright posture was in, in incredibly attractive for me. So those were really the features that I was looking for. I decided to add a few creature comforts like a tool well in the back here that I can put tools dedicated to those operations. First and foremost, this is my dovetailing bench. So I have a dovetail saw right back here. I've got some marking gauges and things that I use to lay out all this, some dovetail markers and things like that. And the front vise is really the perfect solution for dovetailing. This is a bench crafted Moxon vise setup. It very quickly will grab a board of, you know, normal say box size width all the way up to a much bigger case piece. This is a 12 inch wide piece of cherry and I've got a substantial amount of holding power here which is a quick twist of, of the, the wheels. I have a full 24 inches of space between the screws so I can grab an entire case side in here. This bench absolutely excels at dovetailing. So for no other reason than if you cut a lot of dovetails this is a great solution for you. As I began to assemble this in my mind, I thought, well, what other tasks would I want to do here? And this front vise handles so many other things. Certainly, mortise and tenon joinery works really well here. It cuts great tenons. You can grab a piece, either slip it between screws, or it also works very nicely on the outboard side. So I can come in and, and saw, and if I need to come down at an extreme angle, I can saw right off the bench. I added in a little flip stop sawing mechanism. This is a tip I picked up from uh, Frank Klaus that has kind of a built-in bench hook right here. I can push my material up against it, do any kind of cross cutting I need to. Of course, I can always just grab the bench hook off my normal bench and I can slide it right in place and use that. Or uh, I can also just lock it in place using the front vise, and this works really well, uh, especially if I use one of my lower profile pairing hooks to just kind of have a, a chopping surface. I decided to go ahead and add in a few other work holding features. Simply enough, just three dog holes across the top. I can take any one of either my Veritas Holdfast or my traditional uh, Holdfast, and I can reach just about any spot on my bench and hold it down. You pair that with, say, a block in the front vise, set down at a lower angle, or at a lower angle, altitude, whatever you want to call it, and you can make a really effective stop. You can push right up against the, the piece in the vise and use a hold fast to hold it at a second point. And this is where it's really useful for something like carving. I can set a piece up in my front vise, bring my carving piece in behind it, my actual project piece, and I can put another piece even behind that and hold it with a hold fast and it kind of wedges things in place and it really holds things firmly and you have full access to everything on the top. So more and more, features became accessible on this bench 
just by adding in uh, a few uh, dog holes. I have a little fence in the back here that raises and lowers. It's just kind of held in place by some blocks screwed into the back of the tool well. This will pop up and allow me to slide material up against this and it works kind of like a reverse bench hook. Very, very effective if I need to get in and do some chisel work. This will drop down below the surface of the bench as well and allow uh, more freedom of movement. So over the past year, I found myself turning to this more and more for the detail work. I also discovered that doing my layout up here was very effective. Bringing the work closer to my eyes, I was able to get into the more details and I'm not having to bend over a whole bunch so it's one of the reasons I pretty much have all of my layout and marking tools right here in the tool well on the back. So I began to think about how could I even extend this further? And several of my hand tool school members had inquired about the possibility of using a bench like this in a situation where maybe you're living in an apartment or have an extremely small workshop space. Enter the planing beam. This planing beam is built to tack right onto the side of the bench and it's got a row of dog holes all the way down the face. I've used uh, a Veritas Wonder Dog on the back to act as a vise and you can put dog, dogs in the dog holes all down the side. Additionally, I built in a fence on the edge that's out of hard maple that slides up and slides down and it can lock into place. There's just threaded inserts in the side of the six by six beam that will allow you to take a piece and not only butt it up against a dog hole, but up against this fence, you've got two points of support. This makes this planing beam really effective for doing cross grain traversing activities when you're milling boards, or uh, it actually works as a really good sticking board if you need to cut moldings and things like that. I found that I can, I've got a, a hold fast down here in the leg and I've got dog holes that run all the way down the leg. I can clamp things against the leg. The leg is flush with the planing beam. So I can clamp things vertically against the leg with just that hold fast. Or if I need to do long edge planing oper operations, I can run the board along the beam and just use a series of normal shot clamps to clamp it in place and be able to, to joint that particular edge. So adding this little beam suddenly now sets things up so that it's at a lower planing angle, more effective for power to weight transfer. So you're not just using all your upper body and pretty much there's very little that you can't do now that you add the planing beam. Certainly larger pieces are kind of hard to mill flat and true on this narrow planing beam, but at the same time, it's a lot better than nothing. And when it's, uh, attached just using a series of dowels to the side of this bench, it's pretty heavy and it won't move around on you as well. So like I said before, there's no better way to demonstrate how this all works than by building a small project on it.
And here's our finished project, just a neat little serving tray. Honestly, don't even know what I'm gonna do with it. I know that I've got a mother-in-law that would probably love it. I'll uh, probably round some things over, maybe add a little bit of curves, maybe some uh, handles on the end. But essentially as a, a test project for this bench, being able to demonstrate that you can build an entire project on this, I think it's pretty much a success. Now, this video was almost three years in the making. Some of the initial shots at the outset of this were filmed in the summer of 2012. I built this bench in late summer 2011, leading up to Woodworking in America 2011. And those of you that visited my booth in the marketplace then got to see the bench in its pristine condition. The point is, I've got some serious experience working on this bench to back up some of the conclusions I've made about it. So let's look at how it functions. For carving, it's simply fantastic. It gets the work up close so you're not stooping and you have it right in your face. For dovetailing, it's really a machine and that's exactly why I built this bench and why I call it a joiner rib bench. This front vise is about the perfect thing for dovetailing. It allows you to dovetail both a small and a large project with all of this space between the screws. Shaping curves, Again, it's excellent. Just like carving, it gets the work up close to your face so you can see how the shaping develops and you look at it from different lighting angles. For just small kind of block plane work, it's outstanding. Again, getting the work up close to your face, the block plane handles that delicate stuff Then you don't really need leverage of a lower bench position. You can break edges with the block plane very quickly and it's a very common task and the vise will hold everything right where you want it. Really, for refining most joinery, lifting the work up high where you can see it and where you're really just relying upon upper body strength, this is a great opportunity. Whether you're refining a groove with a router plane or doing some chisel work on some cope and stick joinery, this is the place that you want to set your really precise work. And while we're talking about precision, precision cross cuts can be handled really well on this flip stop over here. Again, because the visibility is there, because you're up high and not having to stoop to see your lines, you can cut that joint exactly where you want. 
The fact is that most of the live sessions and joiner demonstrations I do in the hand tool school, I do at this bench. It makes things a lot easier to film on this small surface, but I've got kind of proof right there that there's really very little that I can't tackle on this bench top. The front vise handles anything you throw at it, and if I really wanted to extend the applications on this bench, I could add some other things to it, like a shooting board that slots into this vise. A perfect example, like the groove that I plowed on this, just by putting a dog hole down here, clamping a fence behind it. Another example is when I was doing lamb's tongue joinery or lamb's tongue transitions on a recent four poster bed I built for the hand tool school. I took my joinery saddles and actually clamped them in the front vise and then clamped the entire post into those joinery saddles and I was able to essentially do carving work up high here but hold that workpiece very, very securely. Now here three years later, I don't have the planing beam anymore. I gave it away to a friend and it really shouldn't be a reflection upon the effectiveness of that planing beam. Let's be honest, the one area this bench doesn't work is it's set real high and it doesn't give you that leverage for heavy duty milling. That smaller surface makes it a little difficult to mill larger boards. The planing beam did fill that niche, but I've got a Rubo workbench, an almost nine foot workbench right off here off camera, so why would I need that planing beam? It was just taking up space, and when I remodeled the shop, I gave it to someone who could really, really use it. So, you know, the fact that I don't have it now shouldn't be a reflection that it's not a good idea. If I ever take this bench back out on the road for shows or something like that, I will probably build another planing bench. So on the whole, three years later, I feel really, really good about building this joinery bench. I feel great about the design. There's really nothing I would change about it. So I hope you'll consider building one and add it to your own shop. And if you do, please share it with me. I'd love to see it. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you next time. In the basement room that day Poking fun and making jokes We're getting on their knees to 